Hi there, I hope you're well and having a wonderful day. My name's Soph and I'm a secret gamer who loves all things Magic the Gathering, video games and cups of tea. All day, every day. <laughs> Today I'm giving you a personal tour of my Aloro Life Gain Control deck. I've had this deck for quite a long time. I started playing Magic in 2018 and this deck has gone on a bit of a journey with me since then. The last deck tech you saw was on my Rin and Seri cat dog tribal deck, which is just a chill, hang out with your mates, play some magic on a Friday night, maybe have some pizza as well. This deck on the other hand is the complete opposite. <laughs> I'm giving you all a trigger warning now. This is a dirty deck. It is crammed full of hard hitting interaction and control cards as well as lots of ways to lose your friends in general. So it's not for the faint hearted. As always, I've popped the deck list in the description below for you so you can have a closer look at the deck if you like. So just a quick one before we get started. Now I've settled back into work and I've got my groove back a bit. I'm gonna get back into uploading a video every single week. So if you're new here and enjoy the content, I'd really appreciate it if you could please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep this baby growing. With that said, let's get on with the deck tour. The commander is a Loro Aegis Ascetic who costs three and a white, blue and a black to cast and is a four five legendary giant soldier creature. Okay, so there's a lot of text on this card. Um, so let's keep it simple. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain two life. It doesn't matter if Aloro is on the battlefield or in the command zone, you're gaining that life, sis. If you do have him out on the battlefield, whenever you gain life, you can pay one, and if you do, you draw a card and each opponent loses a life. Happy days. So the aim of this deck is to gain as much life as possible and as quickly as possible in order for me to spend my life with Bolas's Citadel or Aetherflux Reservoir. There's lots of control cards to stop opponents from attacking me and to slow their game plan down. I've been really excited to show you this deck because it's very different to my other decks. For those of you who don't know, I'm not a massive fan of playing blue because counter spells tend to break my heart into teeny tiny pieces, so I don't want to inflict that pain on other people. Ah, I'm just kidding, there's absolutely some counter spells in here. But let's run through the ramp quickly. It wouldn't be a Sophie deck without a Soul Ring. You know how much a staple this baby is, alright? And it's the same for Darksteel Ingot. Orzhov Signet, Commander Sphere, and Thought Vessel. Some of you might argue that Burnished Heart is also a good Commander staple. Speaking of six mana, if you kick Skyclave Relic, you give yourself three copies of it, which is awesome in a three colour deck because it gives me flexibility and versatility with my colours. Weather Wayfarer is really great in multiplayer if you start missing land drops. And then finally for ramp, we have the legend that is Smothering Tithe. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they have to pay two, otherwise you get a lovely treasure token to live your pirate fantasies. <laughs> so as well as having a Loro to draw cards whenever I gain life, there are some other ways. Firstly, let's start with a classic that is Opt. We've also got a Ristic study, just so you can annoy people by asking the inevitable question every time they cast a spell. Good God of the Dead, it's Erebos. Did you see what I did there? <laughs> Not only does this dude stop your opponents gaining life, which if you didn't know, really gets on their nerves, especially when you can't get rid of him easily because it's indestructible. Well, you can also pay two and pay two life to draw a card. Oh, and it's a 5-7. Damn, Erebos, you are good. Giving me those Harry Potter Dementor vibes is Drogskull Reaver. And then there's one of the best life gain artifacts, which is 
Al Hamaritz Archive. I had to think about that before I said it. <laughs> Which is just an incredible five costing card that speeds up my game plan in more ways than one. I love this card so much. I know it's technically not card draw, but it does do the same thing in giving me stuff to play. Bolas's Citadel is so perfect for this deck. It not only lets me see what's coming from the top of my deck, but it lets me cast spells from the top of my library by paying life rather than the mana cost. So I don't even need to worry about having the right colours, I can just drain myself instead. And to be fair, I normally forget about its bottom ability because I don't have much to sacrifice, but it's just blooming amazing anyways. Let's get the life gain train going with Boon Reflection. The art on this card reminds me of um, Marley and Marley from Muppets Christmas Carol. What do you think? <laughs> it's like they're pouring all the gold for Scrooge McDuck to jump into later. <laughs> this card works amazingly well for the deck. I mean, it ups Aloro to four life on your upkeep. And what else does a gal want? Revival, revenge, let's flip it this way. I'm not gonna lie, I may as well cut this card in half and it just be Revenge. Because in the history of playing this deck, I've never played Revival. <laughs> I flipping love this card. It always plays a part in me winning the game. Plus, making an opponent lose half of their life is pretty freaking awesome. Beacon of Immortality is similar to, apart from it's an instant, which I'll never complain about. It gets shuffled back into my library as well, so it can come round for seconds. A lot of the cards in this deck follow my game plan of gaining life whilst also draining my opponents. So I've included the bro that is Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. And I don't know about you, but I proper get the feeling that Vito knows how to throw a really good party. Like, a party that you probably would be a last party, but anyways. <laughs> Sanguine Bond does the same thing, but it's an enchantment, so it's slightly harder for your opponents to get rid of. And then, if you really want to fuck someone over who's playing a lands deck, then behold, Polluted Bonds. Yeah, I'll agree, okay? This is dirty, but you gotta get your hands dirty sometimes, aren't you, right? I've also thrown in a Kambal console of allocation and a Twilight Prophet. I played a Twilight Prophet the other day and one of my opponents got rid of it before I even had the city's blessing. I was so sad. <laughs> oh well, your day will come, Twilight Prophet, don't you worry. So, as well as having lots of life in the bank, it's absolutely essential that I slow my opponents down. For example, Ghostly Prison stops people from attacking me, and if they do, then it's with less creatures anyway, because they have to pay for each creature to attack me. Another way to stop opponents from attacking me is with cards like Blind Obedience. Blind Obedience has Extort, so I can pay an extra one whenever I cast a spell, and each opponent loses a life and I gain that much life. So in multiplayer, I can gain up to three life, which is great. Authority of the Consoles. Authority of the Consoles is gaining me life as well. Uh, it depends what deck my opponents are playing. Like token decks are obviously going to be better than, let's say, an enchantment deck. And Thalia, Heretic Cathar. You can see it reads not just creatures, but non-basic lands as well, which is pretty crazy. A word of warning with these three cards, your opponents are going to work together to get rid of these because it's super annoying for them, as you can imagine. Aura of Silence is also going to get on their nerves and is also a great option if I need to remove an artifact or enchantment as well but I tend to leave it as a last option because I'd rather they use more of their mana to cast artifacts and enchantments. Like paying four for a soul ring does not sound good, does it? <laughs> I'm so evil. Like Thalia, Archon of Emeria makes my opponent's non-basic lands come in tapped. But the best thing about this card is that each player can only cast one spell a turn, which is awesome for me because I have quite a lot of high cast costing cards so it's slowing my opponents down whilst I'm playing one big spell every turn 
Plus, it's got flying, which always comes in handy. Other ways to control the game is with Dranith Magistrate. Look at that foil, very nice. And Kunaros Hound of Aethros. Wow, these cards are testing my tongue today. <laughs> these two, especially this doggo, immediately stops decks like Muldrofa and Sir Conrad, and both of these cards are really cheap to play for the effect that they have, so it's a really good deal for me. The main way I win with this deck is with Aether Flux Reservoir. The card where if no one has a counter spell, it's pretty unstoppable. Once I've doubled my life total at least once, I can start knocking people instantly out of the game, out of the park, see you later. This card is the reason my boyfriend hates playing against this deck with a passion, which I will agree is not a very fair card in 1v1, and I am considering taking it out because it's had its time to shine, I always win with it, and the last thing I want to do when I play Magic is take away the joy and fun from someone else. It's not just about winning, it's about both of you having a good time together. So with this in mind, if you have any suggestions for a card to replace Aether Flux Reservoir as in a fairer 1v1 win con, please let me know in the comments because I'd like to mix this deck up as well. Okay, moving on to Angel of Destiny, which your opponents will want to avoid at all costs. <laughs> I've never won with this yet because someone always removes it before I have a chance to attack. But, you know, I don't really blame them because I do exactly the same thing because it's terrifying. I feel like Angel of Destiny is just built to be really good in Commander generally. But with this deck, if I have Veto or Sanguine Bond out, <clears throat> when a creature I control deals damage to a player, then it's going to stop them from gaining that life back as well. Does that make sense? I've not, I've not really explained that very well, sorry. <laughs> Finally for win cons, we have Test of Endurance, giving me those beat em up Smash Bros vibes from the art. It doesn't really take much to get to 50 life. If I don't play anything, it's only five turns because of Aloro, which is just a bit silly, but oh well. Similarly, there was a Felidar Sovereign in this deck at one point, which is another life gain win con go to, but it was needed in another deck, so it lives somewhere else now. <laughs> Just looking at some good stuff for the deck, Tivash Gloom Summoner is a brand spanking new card in the deck, so I've not used it yet, but I'm super excited to see how it plays out and just see how scary I can make my side of the battlefield. Let me know if you've had a good, bad, meh experience with Tivash in the comments below. Another token maker is Resplendent Angel, who makes 4-4 four, four flying angels if you gain 4 or more life in a turn, which is incredibly easy with this deck. All I need is a boon reflection and it's Angel City, bish. Now, you may be asking me, so where my people at? Well, I got some party people for you. It's Planeswalker time, baby. And let's kick it off with the most badass kitty cat you'll ever see. It's Ajani, Strength of the Pride. Although I don't have loads of creatures, um, I do still have a nice amount. And there's seven Planeswalkers as well, so plenty of life to be gained through its plus one ability. Plus, he makes Ajani's Pride mates, which are just really good in any life gain deck anyway. They just get super out of hand super quick. There's a Sorin Grim Nemesis who just ticks all the boxes for the deck. Um, I've been reading bits and pieces of lore about Sorin and Markov Manor, and it's super intriguing. Especially with everything that's happened with Nahiri, I find it so interesting. Anyway, I'm babbling. So let's look at this beautiful Nasa partner of Veils. Nice shiny, which we got from um, Secret Lair. I'm not sure which one, but who else is in love with the stained glass arts? Oh my God, it gives me life, Narset. Another super annoying card for your opponents to deal with. Next up is Ashiok Dream Render. Now, I don't know about you, but Ashioks are always like super mean. Even the art is kind of freaky. <laughs> And there are three Tefries in this deck because, let's be honest, you can never have too many Tefries. There is Tefri Time Raveler, Hero of Dominaria, and Master of Time. Can I just say, 
there's been way too many times someone has taken two extra turns with this person and I have to say it's my turn I want to go I want the two extra turns god damn it so because there's so much interaction in this deck I've broken it down more and put them into sections so first let's get those pesky counter spells out of the way I've got the OG itself Mr Counterspell this is a signature spellbook version of the card and I love it so much. Um, also, I read the, this lore the other day that Liliana and Jace were like a thing and I just love that so much. I'm like obsessed, like what a power couple, even though she was using him at the start, but whatever, we'll just, we'll brush past that. <laughs> Any Liliana lore I'll eat up for breakfast, honestly. And then we've got Absorb and Sinister Sabotage. This is another crazy art, it's pretty fucking cool. Um, with this deck having less creatures, board wipes are a necessity to slow down my opponents and keep my life total up. So we've got a Day of Judgment, very nice, full art, and a Time Wipe. They both destroy all creatures, apart from Time Wipe lets you save one by putting one back in your hand. So Merciless Eviction gives you some choice and flexibility depending on what everyone else has got on the board. Whereas Cyclonic Rift and Undo Inversion are all about permanence. Of course you want to try and overload Cyclonic Rift when you can and Undo Inversion is just another great MDFC to have in your deck as an option when you need it so it flips into a land. I'll just show you. So it flips into this land. Essence Pulse is another brand spanking new card in the deck so I've not played it yet but I'm super excited to give it a go especially on turns where I've just doubled my live total and I can kill massive hydras and stuff it's just gonna be sick I can't wait. Path to Exile, Swords to Plowshare and Reality Shift are all awesome commander staples. You just gotta hope your opponent doesn't manifest something worse from the top of their library, but hey, who doesn't love a bit of risk, eh? Narset's reversal is amazing for when an opponent plays something super spicy, or you can use it on your own spells like Revenge or Beacon of Immortality. It's a bit of a sneaky sneaky card this one, I've gotta say. So you all know I'm a simp for Throne of Eldraine, I will be Throne of Eldraine until the day I die, which makes Frogify even better. All I need is two mana and I can live my evil witch life turning creatures into frogs. Now, what more could I ask for? If it's not creatures I need to get rid of, then Utter End and Anguished Unmaking are the cards I need. Of course, I'm not going to bat an eye to losing three life either. I'm like Richie Rich when it comes to it, you know, it's pennies to me. If I'm in the life spending mood, then Vona, Butcher of Megan is perfect for this. And if you think about it, seven life is nothing to destroy a non-land permanent. It's so, so good. Vona, I'll bow down to you like everyone else in this art. Containment Priest stops decks like Kalia and Muldrova right in its tracks. It's also really good against spells like Sneak Attack. You'll be everyone's favourite player when you stop scary creatures entering that your opponents haven't paid for, trust me. Finally for interaction, we got Tefri's Protection. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the definition of iconic. <laughs> I played a multiplayer game a few weeks ago with this deck and it was just me and one other opponent left and they were sat there, <laughs> bless them, they were sat there trying to work out how to win and I had a Teferi's protection in my hand and honestly I've never felt so powerful in my life. <laughs> My friends who had died earlier in the game were just chuckling, looking at my hand. And my poor opponent just didn't have a chance to be honest, like as bad as that sounds. This card is just ridiculous and I freaking love it. So with this deck being three colours, the lands mainly consist of dual lands and a couple of MDFCs. To start with, I've got a Castle Lockwain, which can draw me cards and then also Seagate reborn is a great option to have in the deck so i can use it as a land or you can flip it over and it's 
Seagate Restoration, which is another, another really solid draw spell. It's quite expensive, but you get no maximum hand size for, size for the rest of the game. So win, win, baby. I'm going to quickly go through the lands. Um, I'm not going to talk about them or I'd be here forever. <laughs> so if you want a closer look, you can always check the deck list in the description below. So here we go. So that's my life gain control deck. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you have a similar deck or have any recommendations for this deck. Please do let me know. Don't hesitate to say hi. I read all the comments and try and respond to as many as I can. Um, as usual, I'm going to kindly ask that you please share this video with your playgroup and your magic pals online. If you enjoy the content, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can make even more magical The Gathering goodness every week. Um, but yeah, that's all for now. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye!